So we're learning a new skill here, linearizing graphs. And I think that there are two important points that we want to uh, address here. One is, <clears throat> excuse me, one is why? Why would I want to learn how to linearize a graph? Uh, and the other is how does it work to linearize our graphs? Um, so I made up some fake data here. Uh, water is spilling onto the floor. So I'm a nerd. So I made a graph of the area of the puddle on the floor versus time. And I think that this graph looks quadratic to me. But I don't know that it's quadratic because I'm just making some measurements and trying to find out a pattern. So how can I know if I'm guessing correctly that the pattern I'm looking at is quadratic? Because if I try a quadratic fit, it looks nice. If I try other shapes, other kinds of curved graphs, they look good too. They look maybe even just as good as a quadratic graph would. And so uh, an important question when we're doing science and trying to find like, what's the mathematical pattern here? Um, linearizing a graph is a really powerful tool that can help us check if our guesses are right about the shape of a graph. So looking up here at the data table, we can see um, I measured time, one through seven seconds. I measured areas. Uh, and as time increased, then the area of uh, the puddle increased. So if it's true that my guess that maybe this graph is quadratic, if that's true, then that quadratic graph would look something like area equals something times t squared, like a y equals some number times x squared graph, except I'm using t for time area. Um, I should have just written an a, I guess. Um, actually, if we look back at uh, my data table of fake numbers, um, the, the pattern is I just made up fake numbers to fit the pattern of y equals 2x squared. So I just typed out the numbers 1 through 7, and then I just squared those numbers and then doubled them to create that pattern. So this is sort of a, a fake pattern. Um, but if we were doing real data collection, then we wouldn't know in advance what that pattern is. We're trying to figure out what that pattern is. So if the graph is quadratic, then the y values should be equal to something times the square of the x values, like y equals number times x squared. And so a way that we're going to check out, does that actually fit, is by making a new column of data for times squared, or for whatever your x-axis is, x squared. Um, or if we think there's some other pattern, we'll see at the end that there are other ways we can try to linearize a graph. This is just my first example. So to make that new column, uh, I could either calculate those by hand, or I could use a calculated column. To do it by hand, then what I would be doing is I would be looking at a time of one second, okay, square that. A time of two seconds, square that. A time of three seconds, square that. And I would be working out uh, those numbers on my own. But I think it's really useful to learn how to create a calculated column. So the way that I do that, and these instructions are specific to using graphical analysis. If you are using the graphical analysis software from Vernier, or if you use Logger Pro, then uh, it's almost identical. If you're using other software, then you're not going to see here exactly how to do it, but other software can do it. So I click on the data table, I click on the three dots, and it brings up uh, an option. I can add a new column that I'm just going to type in numbers. I can add a new column that's calculated. I want to do it, add a calculated column. And when I click add a calculated column, then I can create a name for this new column. And you know that I always give my columns names and don't just leave them uh, with the default because I want the things on my data tables and graphs to actually represent the, the physical whatever I'm measuring. Um, so if I'm squaring time, then the unit would be, if time was in seconds, then the unit of time squared would be seconds squared. And now I'm going to type those things in, and then I'm going to come down to this insert expression and click on that. And then a new box is going to pop up that lets me pick what kind of expression do I want to make here. 
And what I want to do, since I want to do time squared, I want to take a column and just square it. So I'm going to choose this one that I've got an arrow pointing to because this option is to take a number, to take a column of my data, the X, and raise it to some power. So that's the one I'm going to click on. There are other choices for other kinds of shapes, but that's not what we're going to do right now. So I click on that one. And it gives me the option then uh, where it used to just say uh, insert expression. Now I can type in values for that parameter A, column X, parameter B. And so since I'm trying to do time squared, then that parameter A, I just want to multiply it by one. I don't want to do anything fancy there. So column X, when I click on that, then it gives me an option of all of the columns of data that I already have. So I chose time from the drop down menu, and then I just selected that number to be two. So I'm doing time raised to the second power. And so now, having entered that, then it's going to just automatically generate these numbers for me. So I'm telling the computer how to calculate these numbers for me so I don't have to do it myself. And you can see that it took these times and squared them. Two seconds, four. Three seconds, nine. Four seconds, 16 seconds squared, and so on. And so now, when I look at these numbers, it's clear to me I can see that these area numbers are always twice as much as the time squared numbers. Eight is two times as much as four. 18 is two times as much as nine. 32 is two times as much as 16, 50 is two times as much as 25, and so on. So when I graph area against time squared, now in order to do that, I'm going to have to change at the bottom of my horizontal axis, the vertical axis is twice as much as that. So vertical axis equals two times as much as the horizontal axis. And so I do get a straight line. Now, if that pattern, if that relationship between area and time had been anything other than quadratic, then this would not give me a straight line when I graph area against time squared. And so what I can do when I'm trying to guess at what's the right shape, I can try an assortment of different patterns um, by graphing, uh, like say area versus time squared. Maybe I would need to try area versus time cubed if there was a different pattern for how the water was falling on the floor. Um, so I can try graphing different stuff on one axis or another until I find a line. And when I do find a line, then I know that that is going to give me the correct relationship. So finding a line here means that it is a valid pattern that area is equal to some slope times time squared. Now, first reason why I really want to care about this is instead of just guessing at this looks like a nice pattern, then I can know this is mathematically the best relationship that I can find. And so to know that I've got the right relationship is a really helpful thing. But also, the math of straight lines is a whole lot easier than the math of curvy things. And that can really help us a lot because we know how to deal with the math of straight lines. The math of straight lines, we have y equals mx plus b, and we can create an equation out of that. With y equals mx plus b, I want to start from, uh, I'm going to replace the y and the x with the variables on each axis. And so I'm going to replace y with the area. I'm going to replace the x with time squared. Remember, we put time squared on that axis, so I definitely need to have t squared there, not t. Because when I graphed area versus t, I didn't get this line. When I graphed area against t squared, I did get this line. So the math of a straight line, area equals slope times t squared plus whatever that starting area is, our y-intercept. And if we look at the fit for this graph, for this straight line, we have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0. Um, now, normally, the math wouldn't be 
quite so neat and clean if we were collecting real data, but these numbers are made up fake. So I get perfect numbers here. But now I know I can substitute in the zero for the y-intercept, the two for the slope. I also know the units for the slope because we're thinking units of rise over units of run. So I'm doing an area in centimeters squared divided by a time squared of seconds squared. So now I've got a mathematical relationship. Area equals two centimeters squared for each second squared times t squared plus zero. We could leave off the plus zero. And now we're not using t squared, we're using t because we had to put t squared on the axis to get the straight line. But now our equation of that straight line gives us that quadratic relationship that we were looking at at the very, very beginning. That is the mathematical relationship between area and time. And so we have verification and we have an easier way of creating equations. Nice. Now, not everything is going to be a quadratic relationship. It's life isn't that easy. Nature isn't that easy. Um, if you look at the very, very, very last page of a paper that I gave you at the beginning of the school year about the way that we analyze graphs and collect data and create our graphs, uh, the very last page actually has a, a page all about how can I change to try to linearize this? What can I try to do? And if I'm looking at, say, a straight line, then I don't need to do anything to linearize it because it's already linearized. Um, if there is no pattern like a horizontal line, that's just showing that the that y doesn't depend on x. And that's already a special version of a straight line and doesn't need any modification. But if I see a shape like so, then here is a first guess at what I could try that says y versus x to the negative one or y versus one over x, those are interchangeable. Or if it looks to me like I have a, a curve that's getting steeper, um, that looks like a quadratic relationship, then I can try y versus x squared. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But then I could try like maybe x cubed, x to the fourth if I need to. Or if I have uh, this sort of graph, then I could try graphing uh, y squared versus x. And so to linearize that one, then I could try squaring the vertical axis instead of the horizontal axis. And so there's an assortment of different ways that I could try linearizing. And we try until we find something that actually fits. Uh, and then it's easy for us to create the mathematical model because then we just have to do the mathematical model of a straight line just using something on one of our axes like where one of our variables has been modified so i hope that was helpful